Alright guys, I was having a relatively peaceful day finishing up homework, getting all of my stuff done so I could, you know, enjoy the week, get ready for the Super Bowl, do what research I do before I lay down my bets and all of that different junk for the Super Bowl. It's also important for me because the Patriots are playing, but I was, you know, trading off. I was like, okay, let me finish one of my Statistics 440 homework. And then I'll do a video on one of these deck profiles, and then I'll do another homework assignment. Then I was watching a live stream um, of Halo Wars 2, and they're like, well, the beta ends at 6 Eastern, and it's 4.50 Eastern, so I've got to get these done. I can't keep taking 40 minutes to finish up a homework assignment and then recording a video because the beta will be down, and I need to finish these before the beta ends. So, we are now on to Captain Cutter. Oh, God, Captain Cutter. My least favorite... Um, he is kind of fun to play with to try to win as, but I literally hate his deck with a passion. Um, I barely play him. I think I have two gameplays with Cutter, maybe. It might just be one. Uh, but the starting army, this is really preference. I kind of like that. Uh, there are advantages to either ones. So with the Phoenix, you start with two Marine groups and a Nightingale, I believe. And then the Raider, you start with three Warthogs. It all depends on what role you're playing for your team. If you're playing a Collector, uh, supports uh, annoy your opponent on their point. You want the Warthogs. If you want to set up, you want the Phoenix. So I'm going to do this one as... I usually start with the Raider, so let's start. Let's do it. Let's do the Raider. And with Captain Cutter, this deck is a lot of just whatever the heck you want. I'm not entirely sure it matters too much what you uh, what you pick. Uh, it's a lot of preference. But the two things I'm going to throw in first are close air support, which is encircle the target area with Pelican gun chips to deal heavy damage. Now, if you're going to play Cutter, I don't have this in the Cutter gameplay I'm going to have. But if you're going to play Cutter, you do want this close air support. Uh, it is actually really good. It's pretty cheap, and it it has the same viability as a Condor Strike. Uh, so I really do prefer having that in your deck if you're going to play Cutter. Now, I do like the Vulture as Cutter, so we're going to throw that in. Cutter, if you're going to play Cutter, I do like kind of going expensive and then going mid going expensive and then going cheap. So you'll see that here, and the name of that vehicle, I couldn't remember the last name in the last uh, video, is the Kodiak. So we are going to get the Kodiak and the Scorpion into the deck. Uh, now the Scorpion is kind of the tankier unit, it's supposed to compete with the Wraith, but it doesn't. The Wraith is better than... The... If you look at the com the comparable troops to the comparable, if you, ca if you take the... Uh, the Covenant troops, and then they're comparable on the UNSC. I'm not sure there's a single troop other than the Nightingale versus the Engineer that's better. I would rather have the Blisterbacks over the Kodiak. I'd rather have the Wraith over the Scorpion. I'd rather have the Unstable Banshee over the Trooper Hornet. I'd rather have the Reaver over the, um, the, the, the Wolverine. It's just... There's not a whole lot. I'd rather have Hunters over Cyclops. You get two Hunters, you only get one Cyclops, and their damage is comparable. Like, the one Hunter is comparable to the to the singular Cyclops. So, I that's just my opinion. Uh, when the full game comes out, other than using Anders, probably, because I like the Sentinel part of her deck, and I hope they add a couple more cards that deal with the Sentinels, I probably will mostly be playing Decimus and Atriox. Um, Shipmaster is probably the best deck, but I prefer using Decimus and Atriox, so, uh, it's kind of like, I'm using the overpowered side, but I'm not using the most overpowered of the deck leaders. But let's get back into building this, so, Kodiak, same premise as the blister back, but it doesn't work as well, so, like I said, you'll set up the Kodiaks like I set up my blister backs, uh, and then the Scorpion, the Scorpion is a little bit different because I don't have something comparable in my Covenant deck, so that's kind of the one difference. Uh, but that is going to do it for the mid-tier, and now we're just going to simply go with the cheapy, spammy units. Um, and so I want the Hellbringers and the Marines, the two infantry units. Um, I also like the Wild Hellbringers. They're a little expensive for my, for my liking, but they're not bad. They're decent units, um, 
but I just don't personally like or use them. The blast is this unit explodes violently on death, damaging an enemy troops in its radius. Really good card, but uh, it's just, if it was like 40, I would be really interested in it, but it's not. Uh, so that's just kind of my opinion on that. Let's throw in our support unit, which is the Nightingale. Um, like I said, I like it better than the Engineer, but it's about the only thing better on the Covenant side, in my opinion. Uh, so we gotta have that in there, pretty self-explanatory. Now here's where the kind of personal choices come in. We've got four slots left. And now you can either choose Cyclops versus Veteran Cyclops. You can choose Wolverine versus Vanguard Wolverine. You got the Warthog and the Jackrabbit, which I personally like, and they personally go into my deck, but they don't have to go into yours. I would suggest having one of them, uh, but they're not a must. I love the Sniper. He has his viabilities early in the game. He kind of becomes useless late in the game, uh, but he does play a Locust-type role, not nearly the damage. It's not even close to comparable damage, but you can use him as that kind of role. Uh, so you're left with two spots in my own personal deck here, and so I just am personally going to roll out the upgraded the Vanguard Wolverine and the Veteran Cyclops. But for energy's sake, you can always roll out just the regular Wolverine and Cyclops. You could be a little bit more spammy with them, uh, but these are just my personal choices for the Cutter deck. Like I said, I don't personally play Cutter that much. I don't really know many people that play Cutter a lot. Um... Uh, it should be interesting when the full game comes out. Um, I'd like to try to master Cutter just because no one plays as him. Uh, but we'll have to wait and see. But that is going to do it for the Cutter deck. Not anything too exciting to do with the Cutter deck. Uh, it's pretty standard basic. Doesn't have a lot of special cards. If you take out the Vanguard and Veteran Cyclops and you go with the cheaper, more spammy Rusher, Rush deck, then you really only have one Cutter-specific card in the Close Air support. Uh, so it's really a deck you could run with any of the characters. So, I'm not sure. I'll, I'll try to look into seeing if there's better Cutter exclusives that I haven't unlocked. Uh, but, guys, that's going to do it for this episode. I hope you all enjoyed. Drop a like if you did. Subscribe if you haven't. And I'll catch you in the next episode when we'll be going over Isabel. So, I'll catch you guys then. Peace out.